Hello tanks and tankettes, welcome to one of my replays. This is a pretty recent one, it's uh, patch 912, but uh, it's still only from two weeks ago maybe? It's pretty recent. And it is of course the infamous Chiri, yes, the best tier 10 tank in the game. It's the best medium tank, it's the best heavy tank, it's the best scout, it's just, it's so good, it's so good. Now this tank, I mean... <laughs> In seriousness, it is a real oddity on the Japanese medium line. It's the only auto loader that the Japanese mediums have. It basically is the same gun that you get at tier 6, only uh, with better DPM. And when you can see tier 9s with that gun on a, a pretty sluggish medium tank, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's uh, difficult to do well in this tank. It's difficult to be consistent because you're very at the mercy of the matchmaking. And in this game, well, the matchmaking decided to be very merciful indeed. It's put us both at the top tier. I should say, by the way, this is uh, Hildebrandt that I was platooned up with in the IS. So there's a name that's probably familiar to you if you watch Circle on Stream, or even my stream these days. So in this matchmaking, I mean, even though we're top tier, uh, everything's a threat, but at least I know my gun is going to work against everything. With the, uh, the the clip, I mean, you can get the shots out very quickly. With the clip, you can actually uh, get the same average uh, damage, if uh, RNG favours you, as the gun that uh, Hildebrandt's using there, the IS gun. It's 130 average per shot, but of course, it can be a bit all over the place because it's uh, RNG times three when you're firing these shells. So it looks like we've got a decent presence here, but so does the enemy, and oh, that's a T29, don't want to mess with that especially, although it's just fired. A bounce one on the uh, beak of his frontal armour, the, uh, the the seam between the upper and lower front plate, but the other two are, are fine. Now he knows I'm here at this point, and I am a bit concerned about enemy artillery, but there's not that many enemy arties, in fact they've already lost uh, their tier 5 arty. So I, uh, unless I'm really unlucky and the GW Panther decides to target me, I should be okay, maybe. Now, it's at this stage, I go a bit... I don't know. Instead of trying to fight the OI Experimental, I go forwards and take a hit not only from the T29, but from the T43 as well. And I actually bounced a shell on T43 there. Hildebrandt came over to help me, got a really low roll of like 350, and I actually then ended up taking another hit from that T43. So, instead of just taking a hit and then taking out the OI Experimental, for some reason I lunged forwards with no real plan in mind and ended up losing quite a substantial chunk of my health. And now, again, I'm just kind of... I don't quite know. I can't kill the IS because I don't have enough... Uh, I only had two shots in the clip there. The T29 looks like it might shoot me in the ass, so better pull forward here. But this whole escapade, I don't know what I was thinking. I just kind of did it and then hoped it would all work out somehow, and it did, but it wasn't really through any careful thought or planning. So we've won the forest now, I mean we're all a bit battered and bruised, Hildebrandt there is uh, it's actually about the same amount of health I've got, um, but I've managed to rack up 1700 damage and that's not totally terrible, but there wasn't really anything on, on the enemy team that I was going to struggle with armour wise with this gun, even frontally, and this thing Normally when you have a medium tank with a lower amount of penetration, uh, generally speaking, it has good mobility. Something like the, uh, the Comet comes to mind. But this doesn't. This is a really sluggish machine. And actually the, the tier 4 and the tier 5 are exactly the same. They're both pretty damn sluggish. But for their tiers, they have much better guns. So when you can see tier 9s and you can't flank them and, and you have to face them frontally, and on a lot of maps you have no choice about whether to flank or not, even in a, a fast and medium tank. Um, this thing is just seriously awkward, and it's no wonder that many people just don't bother with it, they just skip right past it. But I have decided, for my sins, because, you know, I bought the CGC, I've decided to uh, have a go and see if I can't get through this the hard way. But honestly, it's one of those tanks where I'm not quite sure what Wargaming was thinking. It's like having an ina inadequate gun with an autoloader would somehow make up for the rest of it, and it kind of doesn't. Anyway, the enemy team are down to their last couple of tanks, but we're about 20 seconds away from being capped, so it's really up to our Cromwell, possibly the artillery, 
to decap here. And the Cromwell at least maybe can take one hit, but he's fairly low health. As we can see, the tanks that are over here, well, that A43 is uh, full health. The Eggpanzer IV is going to end up being full health. And I think the T67 is as well. But we've turned up in time to decap. The Cromwell is going to pay for it with his life, unfortunately. But the T29 got a shot in there as well. So that is, uh, that's one uh, decap, and unfortunately, oh, there goes our Jagdpanzer, uh, not our Jagdpanzer, it was the Jagdpanzer that killed the T-29, and uh, he was actually just washing over the cap. But I got a very, very lucky rare bounce there, in fact, that was my only bounce in this entire game, was that Jagdpanzer 4, and it was quite possibly because he was firing Prem ammo, which gets less normalisation. So, therefore, I had a, a better chance of actually uh, having it bounce. So again, the timer's ticking down, but the KV-13 is coming up behind, as is the Tiger, and my goal now is just to try and stay alive, because I don't... I can't play peekaboo with the T-67, and this was actually looking really very tight. We were kind of relying on the uh, KV-13 to come up, but as it was, I got up just in time to get the resetting shot on the T-67. So it was actually me that ended up resetting the T-67, who had a lot of the cap points. Now, either, well, RNG kind of built the KV-13, uh, I think it was the KV-13, of the, the Jagdpanzer 4 kill. So I was able to ninja that kill, but I wasn't then able to get the, T4, uh, the A43 kill. So that left me on five kills rather than six. And if I'd maybe had a, a bit more, I don't, I don't even know. I'm not quite sure where I could have squeezed out an extra kill for the top gun there. But as it was, that was my haste mastery in the Chi Re with that matchmaking, yes. Now, I did get a Defender and a High Calibre as well, and as you can see, Hildebrand also did pretty well. Some of our team, not so much, but it was the Tier 5s that were right down at the bottom, because this was really terrible matchmaking for them. And even if this had been all Tier 7s and Tier 6s, with, you know, minus 1 matchmaking, um, this probably still would have been a decent result. But I was fully expecting to have to do well in a Tier 8 or a Tier 9 game to ace this thing, but as it turned out, even with really favourable matchmaking, I was able to do enough damage and have enough kills and uh, get those uh, base defense points that, uh, yeah, and it was pretty much the damage because I only had like 200 assistance. It was 2,900 damage and the four, uh, the five kills that did it. So I don't know. There we go. The Chi Re. I don't know if we'll see more of this of my own replays anyway because most of my games have been frankly either terrible or just plain mediocre because it's a very mediocre tank in all honesty. But uh Occasionally it can be hilarious, uh, but for serious tier 7 mediums, yeah, there are much better choices. This thing just feels like a real novelty, and I don't quite know why it's there, and I don't quite know why Wargaming couldn't have somehow squeezed a better gun into it, because it's huge, it's not like there's not room, but uh, anyway, I don't know. So, if you've enjoyed this uh, bit of OP Chi Re action, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.